I mean, obviously added a lot of new faces, um, you know, from la since last season. You spent a lot of time with them. We haven't really gotten to, you know, see them a ton yet. But I guess what have you learned from, you know, adding in all those new faces to the old ones so far about your team? Well, I've learned that they fit in really well here. Um, our our returners have done a really great job of getting them up to speed and welcoming them. And they work their tail off and they just fit really well in our system. And, and they've made us a lot better. Um, so it's the, the combo of four transfers and four freshmen. Um, I think our freshmen are really athletic. We have two catchers. Um, and we saw the same transition that we typically do with our freshmen of coming in, maybe um, getting a little bit like a uh, big eyed and then settling in and they've settled in and they've um, done a really great job. And our four transfers um, are, are huge additions as well. So with Bree and Nia and Reese and Morgan, um, they're four impact players that we're going to ask a lot of this season. Um, and they've, they've had a great fall and just really glad they're here. Yeah, and I know the last time that we talked, you said that, you know, kind of the plan is maybe just a lot of pitching by tandem just because you don't have, you know, your your Shanice this year, your lockdown ace. Um, is that kind of still kind of the, the plan moving forward? Yeah, very much so. We've been working a lot in the break of just getting um, really comfortable with who pairs well with the others and and type of offenses they might match up well with and, and just getting really comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, I, I still expect us to pitch by committee. Um, I think we have the deepest and the most, um, arms that real we have a really well-rounded staff. Um, but it is, it's, it is different. We haven't had that lockdown number one, um, since, you know, my, or we, we have since my second year, this is the first year that we are going to pitch by committee, but that's the way the sport's going and we have the group to do it. So I'm excited for the challenge. And then last thing I'll ask is um, just I know you'll always play in some early season tournaments before you come home. Uh, what stood out to you about, you know, the one in Boca Raton and then going to play in Tucson uh, about maybe those fields that drew y'all to want to go play there? Well, it's warm and on the beach in Boca. So that's one thing. Um, and just the teams we're really particular about who we play and, and um, who we play early to challenge us, but to also um, you know, project them to have great seasons too. So, um, you know, the lineup in Boca is really appealing and obviously the weather and then, um, the, the teams in Tucson too, are going to be a great challenge. Um, the, the thing that Tucson brings to is the ball flies there. So, you know, just kind of the challenge of, of, you know, a potent offense and keeping them in the park and when the ball, um, flies out of there real quick. So it's, um, just different dynamics, different, you know, challenges and, and they'll be great. And then Matt handpicks our, uh, our home tournament. So he, he, uh, um, filled all three of those and, and they're, they're really great tournaments. So it'll be great. Dudley. Hey, talk to me a little bit about, you know, you've got some returnees, obviously you played a lot of games uh, and you've got some newcomers. How does the leadership fit in all that with the, you know, the veterans coming back and the, and the newcomers? Well, I think it's good. I think that's a, a good chunk of what you learn through the fall is every team has a different leadership dynamic. And this one's different than last year, which was different than the year before. Um, and so it's just finding, you know, when you graduate, who might be your leaders of who's going to step up and become that voice and who's going to hold that standard and and just, you know, and, and so we've, we found that through the fall, I think we've had, you know, probably four or so really emerge as leaders um, and it wouldn't have been necessarily who I would have chosen at the start of the year, you know, but that's, that's how, um, every year, every year kind of surprises you. And, um, but this team, um, has done an incredible job. They've answered every challenge. We've held them to a higher, higher standard and more consistently than ever. And so it was a fall of growth. And I really like the spot that we're in right now to go into this January and see this preseason before we yeah, we've talked We've talked about how the batting batting lineup could go one to thirteen if you wanted to, but about these early games, these early tournaments, played a lot of games that give you a, an idea of, of what's going to be able to fit in best. Yeah, yeah, I, I I do. You know, we play a lot of games. It's you know, it's a good thing and the bad thing. You have to you have to as a coach hope you're playing well in those first four or five weeks because you're playing half your schedule. 
Um, so your hope you're firing, your hope you're playing well, your hope you're meshing. Um, I do think that we're going to see a couple positions kind of trade trade out. I don't think that we have a clear starter. I think we have a lot that we want to see what they do. And then we have some that may not trade out. Um, you know, we have, which you could guess with a, you know, when you have a, a bat like Kylie Halverson's or Brie Ellis or Hannah Gamble, um, they're, you know, they're, they're going to be playing. And so we have some positions up for grabs. Um, I don't think that whoever starts game one is going to be necessarily the starter in game 30 or game 50. Um, but we have some really great depth. We have some really great athletes. And so you're going to see you're going to see 13 or so get some solid at bats. One last question. Obviously, Bree is right. one last question. Obviously, Bree is uh, so shy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's sarcastic, obviously. But talk about how her infectious personalities probably fit in well with your team. <laughs> you know, you know, the funny thing is, I, I think when she came here, some people are like, whoa, that's not who they thought she would gravitate towards or who she would choose. And I'm telling you that she's she's fit in beautifully um and seamlessly I think she's outspoken but I think she's incredibly confident and her confidence it spills out onto others um so she'll she builds up her teammates really well but it's also this confidence of like she doesn't think anyone's gonna get her out she really do does think she's gonna get a hit every time and when you have a player like that that just kind of lives that way a teammate like that that lives that way you can't help but start to take on some of those some of those traits so it um has been a great fit and um really really happy that she's here appreciate it mm -hmm. eric coach uh as you start practice, I'm always curious because you get the players back from the holidays. Are there, are there specific things you as a staff look at coming back to the players coming back from the holidays that you looked forward to see early on in the first couple practices? Um, A little bit, a little bit. We like to kind of test to see where they're at because we don't want to necessarily just dive in and think that they did everything over the break, you know? Um, so just being really mindful of, of, it being a little bit more of a marathon, not a sprint to get ready. Like we have time to get ready. I, I think we have a different perspective than a lot of other programs that I was seeing on social last week starting. And, and we, today's our first day back. Um, and so I, I think we feel like we have the time. And so just making sure that we're really mindful about their bodies and, and where they're at. And then, um, more so, more so for us, it's just figuring out the weather piece. We were in the fifties last, last week and this week we're, you know, today it's snowing a little bit and icing. So just trying to map that out and seeing what we need, have the checklist of what we need to get through. And, um, so yes and no. You mentioned, obviously you got a lot of position battles and defense. I know it's a big, important part of it. How long do you have a timetable when you go through these practices of, okay, we need to be at this point by X amount of practice, especially when it comes to defense. Because I've had a lot of coaches mention they always, the thing that keeps them up and more times than not is the defensive fundamental. Because you only have so many hours, you can't mm -hmm. cover everything. So what, how do you kind of balance all that out uh, from that standpoint? Well, I think it's a little different for each team. Um, I think that we have that checklist of making sure that we've covered everything and that we're comfortable with all our coverages and all the different situational things that that we need. Um, but also at the end of the day, it's still just the game and they they know how to play the game. And so, um, so yeah, we have that checklist and, and we move through it as the team's ready um, and just making sure that we have those very fundamental, those core things um, locked down. And, and that's the nice thing is, you know, as you kind of change infield and, and outfield and all those things and making sure you have your anchor, like Kylie Halverson's our anchor in the infield. Um, uh, we've moved her from first to second. And, and that's the thing that like, she keeps everybody on that same page and she, and so it's just making sure that she's comfortable with all the moving pieces. We run our defense really through our second baseman. And so, um, it's just making sure that she's, comfortable with all those coverages and then they just kind of take care of each other which is nice but um yeah we move at, we move through it as the team's ready and um you know you know Matt so when he's working our defense we're going to make sure we do the things that hit us the most the best and uh you know when it comes down to it they it's still the game so they'll do fine 
obviously, yeah, you mentioned the uh, the young pitchers. Obviously, this year in the offseason, there's the pitch clock 20 seconds. They have modified a little bit the illegal pitches. What's your reaction to those moves? And is that a, does that affect you at all and how you teach your pitchers moving forward? No. I mean, I, I like to think that we were a team that kept the game moving anyway. Um, we don't dilly-dally very much. We don't do a lot of timeouts. We like to keep the pace of the game. That's something I love about the game. So we try to to just do that so i don't know that the pitch clock's going to change a lot for us i do think the um illegal pitches with like the the foot i think that helps a little bit there's just some that just don't have the mobility and those are the ones that are getting called they're getting literally zero advantage from from leaving the ground um so that's kind of freed us up to just focus on other things which is really nice um but i'm looking forward to these changes i think it's something that doesn't change our game a ton, especially the pitch clock. It doesn't change our game a ton, but it tries, it's going to trim it down a little bit. I mean, I know that my family went to a couple MLB games this summer and the pace of game was so different. And obviously it's a different game and they had a lot more to trim, but when you're going with a six and an eight year old and you can see a baseball game and, you know, a lot less time than you used to. It's really nice for parents. <laughs> so I hope that it just trims it enough to where we don't have to make any major changes when we're looking at TV windows and those type of things. So I'm really curious to see how it plays out. I think it's going to be uh, really positive. Daniel? Hi, Coach. Um, I was just wondering if second year with the Camas and sisters kind of within your system just what how have you seen them develop over the fall and then grow together oh well they are workers they're two of the hardest workers we've ever had um they're also two of the most mature level um they don't have drama in them they just want to work they just want the best for everybody and they just want to win um and i i love their dynamic but what we've seen them this fall is just really find found their voice as leaders um and and just not being necessarily afraid to speak up in those hard times and i think that i've really enjoyed seeing them come out of that shell a little bit and um and use their voice because they're players that you'd want to do that um, and it's not necessarily comfortable for them, um, although they're not players that you have to worry about, like other leaders don't have to ask them to work harder or compete harder. Um, for them to hold their teammates to that same standard is something that this team needed. Um, and so I've I've really seen them step up this fall and I love that. Um, but they, they're they just so great. Um, they're so great and their dynamic is so fun to watch, but um, it's just been really, really fun seeing them continue to grow in this program. I guess you touched on it earlier, but it's going to get even colder up there <laughs> yeah. in Fayetteville. Just kind of how, how are you, you know, I guess navigating. I well, assume I hate the cold, so I hate the cold. Um, and we have a couple weeks stretch of it. And the nice thing is we have, uh, I believe the best indoor in the country. So we can do a full infield in there. We don't skip a beat to, to train in there, um, which is really nice. And it's ours. So we can get in there whenever we want. Um, so the, the thing that we, we may have to do, we'll have to figure out some outfield balls, but besides that we can do everything that we need inside and then we'll just find those windows to get out. But, uh, this is a stretch that's pretty rough. Usually our weather changes pretty quick. And like I said, it was like fifties last week. And so now you're looking at the team showing up and it's snowing and you're like, doesn't that just figure? Um, but you know, we'll make the most of it and we can get everything that we need to done inside and we'll get out when we can. Chip or Christina. Hey, Courtney. Hi. Um, how did you like Les Mis the other night? I saw you were there. I didn't get a chance to speak to you, but how was that? It was incredible. It was yeah. incredible. Was awesome. So I know my husband and I left going, holy crap, that was so good. It was <laughs> our favorite. It was our, we have uh, season tickets um, to the Broadway shows that come through. And that's probably been, if not our favorite, one of our top three that we've gone to in Fayetteville for sure. It'd be hard to top it. Um, I'm always yeah. interested in how our local girls uh, are fitting in and meshing in with, with the program. Um, I'm asking about like Casey Wood and, and uh, Ali Saki. Are they, 
uh, do you see them having roles for you this year? Or what, what do you see for, for someone like Casey, who was kind of did a little bit of everything in high school, pitched and and did, you know, some other things? Well, we see her still doing that. She's still kind of a jack of all trades where she's pitching, she's playing defense, she's hitting. Um, I think that their roles are still getting defined as they move forward. But I will say that they are incredibly hard workers. I think Casey's one of the toughest kids we've ever had come through here and just is a worker. I don't think she even cares too. She'll come and spin the ball against the wall for an hour. Like she just like, she is one of the most low maintenance workers. She just wants to get that work in. And, um, and so I, I just see them continuing to grow. Like Casey's someone that just wants to push everyone and get as good as she can and get better. And, and we're seeing that the growth through the fall. Um, same with Saki coming off her injury. I think she's still settling in and getting back to full strength. And we see that in Jaden Wells. Like we love our Arkansas kids um, because I mean, they're, they're always hard workers. Um, and then they just have such a pride for, for the Razorbacks. And it's something that is an absolute must on a, on this team. And so they bring so much. You guys have been a, a team that's, you know, uh, relied on the long ball a lot, you know, in the last couple of years. Is that something you think you'll do again? Will you be be that again? Or will you be a, a team that plays more small ball? How how will you be, think? I think you'll see a more balanced offense. But, yeah, you're definitely going to see the long ball, long ball. When you have Hannah Gamble, Kylie Halverson, Ryland Hedgecock, and Bree Ellis in your lineup, you're going to see the long ball. Um, but you're we're going to have a more balanced offense. You know, we have – um, a lot more tools. Um, I think we have just, um, I, I think we're more complete um, from top to bottom. And so, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be very explosive, very dynamic and uh, very fun to watch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ethan. Yeah, I was just going to ask one last thing about um, how I know as much as it's the the girls learning the two new coaches with DJ and Danielle, it's them also having to learn the team. Just how has that gone um, with kind of learning each other? Oh, I think it's gone great. I think that um, for and it's us, it's us learning them, too. I think that's the big thing is when you add to two new staff members, we all have to learn how to work together and what each other needs and 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 all of those things. And so I think it's been a fall, a lot of learning. Um, I think the team has absolutely embraced both of them um, as they've embraced the team, you know, but I think they work really well together. Uh, and I think that they've done a tremendous job with this team this fall. And I just love watching the, the dynamic of them um, teaching and our players just hanging on every word, just wanting to know. And um, I think sometimes they're like, okay, let me just get by with something. But no, it's like so consistent and such a high standard every day. And um, it's been, it, it has been a really great fall, a really great fall. Do we have any final questions for Coach Stifel? I just got one question. Obviously, you mentioned you're going to be in Boca. Jordan Clark was on your staff. Uh, she's looking forward to hosting you and then going back as kind of a de facto home and home. My question is, have, did you ever face a coach that you looked up to or that you were a mentor that either came to your place or you just played him and you were like, wow, that meant a lot that I got to face someone that I look up to and, and kind of try to model myself after? Well, that was nice. Um, I... <laughs> She actually did us a favor too. She they let us in the tournament late. We were in another one, and, it, and um, we had to we had to pivot. And so she did us a favor, which is nice. Um, yeah, I I just I know that um, earlier we haven't for a while now, but we had some really good matches with Oklahoma, and so being a GA and Patty system, and then playing against them is a very interesting dynamic, you know, because. Um, it's not just, it's the game, but it's so much bigger than that of just kind of like getting to share the field and compete against them. And, um, and then the good thing is, is that just knowing them and, and knowing Jordan, I know we're going to have a great game and they're like, it's just going to be about the game. And, and although we obviously really want to win, you, you always like playing good people and, um, and, and just playing the game the right way. And so she's done such a incredible job. It's really fun to watch, um, her blossom and do her thing. And you knew right away when she was here that she 
was such an incredible leader. And so she was, she was born for this and um, it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting matchups to see them out there and then to get them home and have, I think she's kind of doing the whole tour of where her old stomping ground. So um, it'll be exciting. All right. Thank you, coach. Thanks guys.